This is the Albuquerque Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, we interview leading local business leaders to inspire the vision and spirit that is in every entrepreneur, discussing strengths, weakness, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together to fulfill a shared vision of a new future for Albuquerque. Hi, my name is Jason Rigby, and welcome to the Albuquerque Business Podcast. Today on our show, we have a very special guest. I don't want to give it away, but he is an international model solopreneur here in Albuquerque, so stick around for that. But first, let's talk about our sponsorships here for this podcast. It has been brought to you by 99.9 The Beat FM. We're in their studios right now. If you live in the Albuquerque area, we encourage you to tune in at 99.9 FM, or if you're at work and you want to stream um, music, then go to 99thebfm.com. Also, want to thank Duke City Marketing. Uh, they have the latest state-of-the-art digital marketing agency here in Albuquerque, and you can go to www.dukecitymarketing.com. That's www.dukecitymarketing.com. If you're looking at doing Facebook ads, Snapchat ads, maybe you want to do some email blasts, whatever that may be. But we have Diego Dean um, in the studio today. He is an international model and has built a modeling career and branding while living in Albuquerque. So I want to go with you a little bit. If we can go back in time, Diego, if that would be fine, let's get a little bit into your childhood. And then from there, um, we'll get into specifics for branding. And um, we had talked a little bit about some fitness with entrepreneurs. We want to go into that with you a little bit. Sure. Um, maybe even people that are over 40. We'll talk about fitness and some of the new projects that you have going on, if that's fine uh, with you. But let's let's start, Diego, if you don't mind. Let's start from... Are you from here originally, or? No, I'm from the East Coast oh, originally, okay. from the uh, Baltimore, D.C. area in Maryland. So I grew up there, a uh, very diverse area. Uh, I came here years later. I've been here for about 18 years. Uh, so basically, grew up in D.C. Uh, I grew up um, LDS, which is oh, Latter-day okay. Saint, to, right, right, right. which is Mormon to the right. layman, uh, which was a pretty unique upbringing, especially on the East Coast. I wasn't in Utah. Uh, like all the other Mormons. Mm. <laughs> um, so basically, there was a spotlight on me all the time, which taught me valuable life, life lessons uh, from an early age that people are always watching. Right. Yeah, exactly. And and basically how that's helped me, uh, I'm, I'm no longer active uh, in church, but when I was 19 years old, I took two years off from college uh, to be a Mormon missionary. And we've all seen them on their bicycles. Right. right with their helmets. And I was one of those guys in Puerto Rico for two years. And that kind of set the foundation mm. for like work ethic being, uh, you know, self-discipline, holding myself accountable. Right, right, when right. When no one's watching. Um, so basically, I, I, that's what really helped me the most. I learned Spanish, of course. Oh, I imagine being in Puerto Rico for two years. I'd yeah. have to learn Spanish. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, eat. right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so I came home, uh, basically went back to college out in Utah, where right. the Mormons go. And after I graduated, went back to the East Coast, back to D.C., right. worked at the State Department for a couple of years uh, with the Office of Cuban Affairs. Oh, so it, were you using your, what, what was that scenario about with the State Department? Like a spy or? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can't talk about that. But, Is there emails deleted? Um, <laughs> basically, I went there originally as an unpaid intern, right? Uh, like a summer intern and I was going to go in the fall to uh, grad school at George Washington University. I had been accepted into Latin, their Latin American Studies program. Oh, okay. And then at the end of the summer, right before school started, the State Department offered me a job, basically doing the same thing I was doing before, but getting paid. Right, now. right. So I decided uh, it would behoove me, good word. Oh, right? yeah, I love that. Now we're getting me, serious. <laughs> it would behoove me to <laughs> stay and, and work instead of paying uh, a ton of tuition money to go to a private school right. like George Washington. Right. So I stayed for two years. <clears throat> Excuse me. After that, I uh, decided I really wanted to go to grad school, but not George Washington. Right. And that's what led me to New Mexico. Uh, you, the University of New Mexico has, or at the time, uh, was number two in the nation in Latin American studies. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And their program is, is amazing, or, or was amazing. I'm really not in touch with them anymore. But uh, very multidisciplinary, which is very appealing to me. And I did right. uh, coursework or I have concentrations in Spanish linguistics, Brazilian studies, and international management, which is basically half of an MBA. Right. Uh, so I got a great education at UNM, 
uh, finished and then decided to stay here. Love the culture, love the people. And uh, basically, I've been working uh, as a Spanish instructor, teaching Spanish and Portuguese at CNM. Oh, uh, and then I also went back to school a while back, uh, maybe eight or nine years ago, and became a paramedic. So I'm also an EMT. Mm. Uh, so at, at CNM, I teach uh, Spanish and Portuguese and then also uh, EMS. I've always, I've always wanted to, I, I know a lot of people's, you know, everybody always wants to go to Portugal or they want to go to, you know, Mexico or, and you've been to all these places, you know, in South America. What is the difference between, I mean, before we get into the, the modeling stuff, what's the difference between Spanish and Portuguese? Is there a difference in the way, can you understand it the same uh, or? Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously they both are Latin based languages. Right. Uh, along with, you know, Italian and French. Um, so they have a lot of common grammar rules, and some of the the verbs are the same. Right. Uh, Spanish and Portuguese are pretty close, written. Okay. Oh, okay. On, on paper, they look the same. Uh, however, there there's some some grammar differences, and uh, a lot of depending on on where you are in Portugal or or Brazil, uh, the pronunciation can be quite different. Oh yeah, right, right. right okay. Right. However, a Spanish speaker usually can understand most of what a Portuguese speaker is saying, and vice versa. Right. Okay, for, for example, quick example, uh, when I was in grad school, I would spend summers in Brazil uh, as a grad student doing research, and I'm doing That's air, a tough air, life. air quotes right now, <laughs> research, uh, every summer, uh, which consisted of going to the beach, basically, during the day, and then volunteering as an English teacher in, in low-income areas at night, which was super fun. But anyway, right. um, so I uh, got married there, uh, met a girl, fell in love, got married, uh, ended up bringing her back. Uh, back when it was easier to bring someone back. Right, right, um, right. And uh, we were married for a long time, married for 11 years before we got divorced. Anyway, she was able, when she lived here, um, and obviously she's a native Portuguese speaker, she could watch Spanish novellas and understand it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, almost perfectly. Right, I mean, right, she right. She watched them every day right. and loved it. So she could understand Spanish pretty well. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Because I know everybody, you know, we always want to go to those perfect vacations. We see them on the, you know, the internet, you know, especially here being in America. Right. Well, let's get into a little bit, of, if you don't mind, I want to get into a little bit about um, modeling. For those that are out there that are looking at this career, I know Albuquerque is a little unique, and we'll get into that. But also, I know um, being a male model. So what compelled you, Diego, to become a male model? Uh, well, I watched the movie Zoolander. Right. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, everybody knows that movie. <laughs> right, right, so right. people don't understand when I tell them I'm a male model, they're like, what? I'm like, Zoolander. <laughs> like, oh, Zoolander. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, just in a nutshell, about 15 years ago, I was working a lot as an actor here in Albuquerque. Right. And doing some modeling on the side, but there wasn't many opportunities at that moment, uh, at that time, because there's no social media. Oh, then. right, right, right. Um, so basically, I, I, as I mentioned before, I got married, mm -hmm. right? And thought I would be starting a family. So my wife at the time was like, no more creative stuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no fun that's for a, you. That's a great relationship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously. And, you know, go back to school. You know, we got to, right. you know, be responsible. But don't be creative. So, yeah, no, no creative <laughs> thoughts. No, no individuality. Nope, that's over. So uh, basically it was just working. And that's why I became a paramedic, you know, to right. make more money and everything. Then, Do the nine to five. As I mentioned, I got divorced. Right. Right. So then... I kind of found myself in a situation where, um, you know, we didn't have kids, so I don't have any child support, and I obviously went back to school and have multiple careers, so I'm like, hey, I have some money, I make decent money, all of my money's mine, Right. I have free time now because I don't have to spend time with kids or a spouse right. or anything, right. so what do I want to do? And I was like, okay, and so I started uh, watching Netflix. And so, as I started watching Netflix, uh, Narcos. We've been watching had, Netflix. It, Narcos had just come out. Right. And I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. So, I started watching Narcos. And Narcos takes place in Colombia and is filmed in Colombia. Right, which you've been there. And, well, not before this. Oh, okay, so not before this. Narcos oh, is kind of okay. what took me to Colombia. Oh, wow, that's, I was that's like, kind of... Um... Maybe this is like a sub story to the uh, it's season three. Yeah. yeah, season four of Narcos <laughs> is the Diego Dean story. So I, I'm like, hey, Columbia looks beautiful, right. and I think I want to go there. Mm. So I literally, this was like in October, and I'm like, well, I have time off in December. I'll just buy a ticket and go to Columbia and visit the cities that are in Narcos because right, I'm familiar right. with them, which are where all the cartels are. Right. right? Bogota, Medellin, and Cali. So I did that. Just went, and obviously I speak Spanish, which makes it easier. So I went and just did my thing and met people. 
Right, right. And one of the girls I met is uh, a working fashion model mm. in Colombia. Mm. So we fell in love. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the story of my life. And um, so anyway, uh, we did the long distance thing for a while. Then eventually I moved to Colombia to be with her. Right, living right. There. And it was then that I really started realizing, hey, I can do this. I can be a male model. Um, I, I spent time with her and her modeling agency, went to photo shoots with her, saw what lifestyle she was living and what it takes to be a, a successful model. Right. Um, how she's always working towards um, building her portfolio. She always has like a nice camera with her oh, and she's right, always right, dressed right. nicely. So literally when we're going to uh, the Colombian version of Costco, right. um, we're driving down the street and she'll be like, pull over, pull over right now. And I'm like, what, <laughs> what happened? And I'll pull over because I do what I'm told. And she's like, that tree right there. Let's do a photo shoot right there. I want a photo shoot with that tree. That's awesome. And so we'd get out and I'd shoot photos of her. Then, of course, I'd be like, okay, now it's my turn. Right. And I'd do my thing. And, you know, that, that's as a model, that's what you got to do. I mean, right, it, right, you right. have to work on your craft and be ready at all times. So, you know, I learned that. And so I realized, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Right, and so right. I started, you know, working with her agency. Um, and started building my portfolio, taking good quality photos. And then turns out that she is crazy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> and so I, I broke up with her. Right. And came back to the United States, back to Albuquerque. And from there, I had already started, you know, my Instagram account and started posting quality photos right. on there and, and kind of had some momentum, so to speak. So when I came back, I was like, I want to keep this going. So that's when I started, you know, reaching out to photographers, trying to collaborate um, with other models, uh, trying to find representation, and just started hustling, essentially. And that right, was a right. few years ago, and it's just kind of um, Escalated grown, now, right? grown since then because of hard work. Yeah, because you've been to, you just got back from Mexico City. Right. Um, so you, you've you been all around South America, basically. Uh, so, I mean, and then Albuquerque, and then, you know, different areas there. One, one of the... Um, you know, one of the things that, that I've noticed with you when I've looked at your Instagram, what is, what's your Instagram so everybody can unfollow It is you? My, my modeling Instagram is Diego Dean 74 and that's Dean, D-E-A-N-E. -E. It's got the E on the end. So Diego Dean 74 is my modeling account. Oh, perfect. So everyone go out there, follow. You'll be able to see. Um, not only do you have uh, – tell me let, – let's get into Instagram a little bit because I know a lot of people – this is really important with entrepreneurs – um, especially, and, and, and I think a lot of business owners don't get the whole concept of what it means to put your best face out, your best brand out on Instagram. Tell me your process about what you choose, like a picture. What, what would you put on Instagram? How do you, how do you go through that process? Wow. Because you have amazing pics on there, by the way. Well, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, it, it, it's a process. I mean, people need to understand. I mean, it depends what your goals are, you know, because some people just have Instagram because they like to post a photo for their, you know, 25 closest friends to see. But if you're building a brand, you really have to identify, you know, what is your brand? Right. You know, what is your goal? Uh, who is your target audience? Right. Yeah, that's huge. Right. And, and how do you reach them? How do you connect with them? How do you get them to visit your page? Right. And then obviously... Once they visit your page, I mean, that's you're at the halfway point at mm -hmm. that point. I mean, you need to have quality content on your page. It, it, you know, as a model, I have to have quality photos, you know, quality stories, stuff that's going to grab them, an interesting uh, profile. Right, right, own. right. Um, and so the next goal is to get them to follow me. And not everyone who visits my page follows me, unfortunately. Um, and then obviously once they follow me, I need to uh, keep them engaged by continuing to post quality content right, and posting right, right. frequently in my story so they know that I'm an interesting person and that right. I exist and I'm not a robot and stuff. But when I choose a photo, I mean, a lot of it, too, is is looking at the other photos. And I don't want to put, like, three black and white photos in a row. Right, you know, right, Because right. that just aesthetically doesn't look good unless I want a whole row of black and white. You right. know, So it's about just looking at it, and I want it to be like a work of art. I want it to be, you know, catch your eye and be like, well, there's a lot going on here. Right. A lot of stimulation, you know, and I want each photo to be a little bit different, and I want it to, to show me in, in different ways. You right. You know, like, for example, I have a big beard, if you haven't seen me. <laughs> um, What's the hashtag for that? I, I saw you were talking the other day 
Um, it, it was Blue like, steel beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zoolander. No, but wasn't there like right a vi- a Viking or something? Oh, okay, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. There's a Viking beard club. That's a <laughs> the good Viking one. beard club. That's mm-hmm. a hashtag. Yeah, yeah for Viking all those, beard club. Um, all those that like big beards. Yeah, there's um, a lot could, of people. Yeah, yeah there's the a beards. lot of that. Yeah, go figure. Vikings are are in style. Right oh, now. oh yeah. that's cool. Vikings yeah. are so hot right now. Um, <laughs> so basically, I have a big beard, and obviously, I have photos of me like without a shirt, me wearing a suit. Right. Yeah, and and, and a variety of photos. Right, right, right. So I want to show that, you know, right. and I'm not going to put just all of me without a shirt on unless that's all I have to offer. So, yeah, you just don't want to like, bleh, and then just put all these pictures out there that have no story and no content to them. Right, and I don't want to throw too much out at one time either because. You know, even though I'm I'm shooting on a regular basis, right. if I were to post four pictures a day, there's no way I can shoot that much <laughs> to keep up with that right, pace. Right, right, exactly. You know, Plus, so I, and myself. you were telling me about, because um, this is important, uh, especially if you're getting into modeling or, or, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking, people are, when they look at your Instagram, and this is what, the, you helped me with this also, is um, you were saying photographers go and look. Mm-hmm. Uh, how does that process work? Like, it, how do they how do they engage you what do they look at um how quickly are they looking on that i mean if you know all that what, what what's the engagement part on that Gosh. i mean it, there, there's so many levels to it i mean there's so many different ways mm-hmm. i mean there, now that i have a lot of content out there i have a lot of followers and i'm always using hashtags you know effectively mm-hmm. i mean i'll get new photographers following me every day right and they'll make comments on a photo like you know love your photo or whatever And I'll look at their stuff and be like, oh, this is a photographer who's really good. I'll like some of theirs and I'll always be sincere. I'm I'm not just randomly liking photos. I'll like the ones that I really like and I'll make sincere comments. Um, And then, you know, they'll respond back and then we'll start to talk. And then that's when I'll go to the DM. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm not, I never just go straight to the DM. It's not like, oh, here's a cool photographer. I'm going to DM him. Right, right. You know, that's kind of, to me, that's just kind of too aggressive and too obvious. Right. You know, I want to connect and build a a relationship with this photographer. So, for example, when I was going to, uh, doing modeling trips to Colombia or Mexico City, and I know, okay, I'm leaving or I'm going there in two months. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to get, you know, five photo shoots with really good photographers. Right. So, I'll kind of search for who the right photographer is. And I'll do that through looking at other models' portfolios, right. you know, pages uh, right. who are in Mexico City, um, modeling agencies in Mexico City. Look at you know the their pages, which obviously are full of high quality photos, and see who the photographers are. Right, right. Go to their page, see if I like them or not, and then make some comments and see if they respond back. And then we can start kind of a dialogue and build a relationship, and then I can move on to directly contacting them right. through the DM. But it it's a process. I mean, it's not. A, a one for one kind of thing. It's like you, you identify thirty photographers who you like, and like some of their photos, and make some sincere comments. You may hear back from four, right, of them, and then of those four, you start a conversation, and then maybe it leads to being able to DM and talk directly to two of them. Right. Not not some fake comment or have some bot do the comment for you, or um, but making a sincere comment on something that's important on the picture enough that you've engaged them absolutely right and then and 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 not doing like this from what you're telling me you're looking at their work pretty specifically and then asking them when you go down there so that and that's what i think about it is a lot of people put their work on you know i know instagram's kind of like it for right now um but everybody's putting everything on instagram then they just expect all these dms or expect all this work (laughs) I think that, that only awesome. works for like bikini models. <laughs> like hot girls can do that and they'll have like right, 40,000 right. followers in a week. <laughs> That's funny. But, but as a male model, uh, you know, the worst thing I can do is, is just wait by the phone. Because then oh, all I'll be right. doing is waiting by right. the phone. You know, I need to make things happen and, and build relationships and network right. with different people. And that takes time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the things that you were talking about earlier is, is the way that you kind of you know, your whole life, it seems like you've been hustling and grinding it out. And a lot of people think, see the, the model, especially on that side, I would imagine with male models, you know, in particular, um, as it being some glamorous thing where behind the scenes, it takes real work to build a brand. Absolutely. I mean, how many hours a day are you on Instagram and working on that crap? Gosh, I probably shouldn't say, (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, I mean, it's, the it's, new phones track it's, you. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's it's a little bit random. I mean, it's not the the same schedule every day. It depends right, right. on you know how much I'm working teaching at CNM or mm, something. But right. I'm I'm constantly you know checking and if I if I've received a comment, I'm going to comment back. Right. If of someone course. DMs me and it's an appropriate DM, so right? To speak, exactly. Um, you know, I'll respond to it. And, and then if I have a little free time, um, you know, maybe right after I've eaten a meal or something. You know, then I'll go in and that's when I'll start to try to network a little bit and build those relationships. So, I mean, it's it's you have to be consistent, I guess, is right, the, the key right. term. You can't just be all excited about it and do it for three days and then sit it aside for a week. Right, and I'll come back right. to it. No, you're going to lose all your momentum. You have to keep it going. Keep it going with the I see you post a lot on your stories, Instagram stories, just keeping that mm-hmm. going. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. One of the things I've noticed, too, um, especially uh, with, you know, the fashion industry on there is that they turn around and, you know, th- they're always telling some type of story, you know, whether it's, you know, something, you know, whether it's a, a, a photo shoot and then the, the behind the scenes of the photo shoot or, right. you know, there's, it's more uh, engaging, not just, uh, here's a picture, here you go. Um, hope you like it. You know, that type of thing. It, it's real work building a brand, but like you said, it's like compound interest. It pays off hugely. Oh, absolutely. Um, in, the, in, in the long run. 100%. I mean, and like you mentioned, when I do a photo shoot, I'm excited because I know I'm going to get a lot of material out of it. Right, right. And I don't mean necessarily just the photos of the photo shoot, but mm. the day of the photo shoot, I'm going to be, you know, filming a little bit with my phone, taking some behind the scenes photos, some selfies with the photographer. And, and of course, I do this all in a professional manner. You right, know, of we're course. Not right. Actually shooting. Um, and I'll get a, a lot of material. And so I can post in my story throughout the day. I can have stuff that I can post later on in, in a permanent story. Right. You know, on my profile page. Right, right, right. Which is a great resource also that people can go to. And, you know, like I mentioned before, half of the battle is getting people to my page. But right. my page needs to be appealing enough that they follow me. And right, so when I have right. those permanent stories, like I have one for Mexico City. I have one for different cities in Colombia. I have right, one for right. different fashion weeks or fashion shows that I participated in. So, you know, a photographer or a fan or whoever can go to the page and, and look at all this stuff and be like, oh, wow, this guy's legit. You know, his life is interesting. He yeah, does a lot of things. Yeah, you probably only have a few seconds that a photographer's looking at your profile. Right. I mean, in all, in all honesty, people are looking really quick in those first few pics. You mm-hmm. know, they may scroll down a little bit, but I think for the most part, they're probably um, on there for, I would say, they're going to make an impression of you in maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds. If that, yeah, right, and so that's the key of uh of that you taught me about making those permanent stories, right, right, because those are right there on the front page, mm-hmm. and if if they catch people's attention, they'll look at them, and then hopefully that's enough for them to be like, okay, this guy's doing a lot, right. I want to be a part of this, right, or, or he's at least captured my interest. You know, I'm intrigued. Let me hit the follow button. Right. Yeah, and I and I think uh I think on Instagram especially, the longer you can keep somebody on that profile the more that you're making an impression and the more likely they are to follow right right mm-hmm. or you know dm you or, or you could go out. back mm-hmm. and reach out when you do and, and i love that because it you know and i think a lot of people don't understand that it's almost on the sell side of things you're you're getting all of these people together all these photographers together saying i'm going to mexico city i need these mini shoots for it to be productive so let me do the work months in advance not right. not two weeks before but months in advance. So how do you, let me, I want to ask you this question. How do you motivate yourself during that time? Like during the hustle, during the time that you, that you're having to grind it out, how do you motivate yourself? And, and that's the hard part because for me, I'm, I'm very goal oriented, right? But just setting goals isn't enough. <laughs> I mean, too we, elusive. we all, we all set goals. And then, you know, if you know how to set goals, you set like mini goals, which are, are goals that are going to lead you, or, or help you obtain the, the bigger goal. Right, right, right. But for me, I need to hold myself accountable. There has to be either a reward or a consequence at the end. Mm, okay. Right, I like that. Um, for example, uh, in modeling, you know, I was starting to be successful as a model, but I didn't feel like I was quite where I needed to be. I wasn't getting, you know, the work I wanted. Right, right. So I realized that my abs weren't good enough. Mm. because a male model is only as good as his abs. 
right? I mean, that's that's you, the you don't truth, see a right? guy with yeah. his shirt off and not good abs, right? Because right? Right. if he doesn't have good abs, then no one's taking his picture, right? right? Or he's wearing a suit, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I wanted to improve my abs. So I talked to uh, a trainer, a trainer slash dietitian at my gym, mm -hmm. named uh, Tomei. Okay. And she's a Miss Olympia competitor. She's top 10 in the world. Wow. Got, got seventh, I think, last year. Anyway, and I told her, I was like, hey, I really want to improve my abs. And I understand dieting somewhat. You right, know, right. I've been, you know, kind of a paleo guy for the past 10 years. And she's like, I can make you a diet. And I was like, cool, sounds good. And then I realized, you know what? I'm, I could follow this diet, but, you know, what's going to motivate me to really do it? Mm. You know, I, I could not be so motivated like i need to have an end goal like a consequence or something right right so i looked at the calendar and i was like huh in five weeks from now there's a uh, an npc physique or fitness contest in denver mm. and they have you know bodybuilding they have men's physique right right which is like beach body you know mm -hmm. you wear uh swim trunks basically and i said to her you know what tome i think i want to do that show because then I'm going to be motivated to make things happen because I don't want to get on stage and get laughed off stage and be a failure. Uh, yeah, of course. And right. then if I tell everyone I'm going to do the show and I quit, then I feel stupid also. Right. And so I approached her and she was like, dude, most people take 16 weeks for a show. <laughs> you have five weeks. She's like, it's going to be extreme what I'm going to ask you to do with dieting and cardio. And she didn't know me that well at that right, point. Right. She just knew me casually from the gym. And she's like, are you sure you can do this? <laughs> and I'm a pretty motivated guy. Like when, when I commit to something, I'm all in. Right. And I told her, I'm like, I know you don't know me that well, but I'll do it. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. And so she made this, this extreme diet plan <laughs> and, ext you know, two cardio sessions a day. And right, that. right. And sure enough, I stuck to it. I did it. And she was impressed. And she was like, I didn't think you'd do it. So I did it, went to Denver. And this was almost exactly a year ago. Right. Maybe uh, 13 months ago. And uh, I got second place oh, in, wow. in, in my category. and With that little bit of training? With five weeks. Time, right? Yeah. And oh, you wow. can see, if you go to my Instagram page, you know, Diego Dean 74 if you scroll down far enough, I've got like a couple photos from there. Oh, and okay. they stand out because I have the spray-on tans. So I look like a, <laughs> a, like a black Why guy with, do that? with yeah. blue eyes. And, and it's very weird looking, but that's <laughs> what they do. They spray you right before. <laughs> um, so anyway... That's the point I'm trying to make is you need to hold yourself accountable. Like right, I, I set right. that goal. I'm like, I've got a show. And that show motivated me. I'm like, dude, I don't want to fall flat on my face. I'm not going to quit. I need to do this. Because if I didn't have that, that show, then, okay, let's say I do reach the goal. What do I get out of it? Mm, like I, yeah, I pat myself good. on the back. Yay, right, right. I did good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm going to go skip around because I did it. I mean, there's, and then if I quit, there's no consequence. Right. You know, it wouldn't matter. You know, so I'm, it's like raising the stakes, essentially. So you got to raise the stakes. Yeah, no, no, I love that. Because basically what you did is not only did you make yourself accountable, but then you went out there and told everybody and put <laughs> yourself did. like where it would really <laughs> put embarrass pressure on you, myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're struggling um, with something that you're particularly needing to do, especially as an entrepreneur, because a lot of times entrepreneurs, I mean, you're a solopreneur, I mean, with what you do, but a lot of times we can say we want to do something, especially now. You know, it's the beginning of 2019 and everybody has all their um, New Year's resolutions <laughs> and goals and all that. I, I would take Diego's advice on that and do something that you have to do regardless. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit, but I just recently started jiu-jitsu. Nice. And, and you had been in jiu-jitsu a long time. You even trained down in South America. And we'll get into that a little bit. But what I find is interesting is I had to put myself out there. Like I called the school then I put alarm, and then I told everybody that I was going to – kind of the same thing. Told everybody I was going to show up, and then I just showed up embarrassed, not knowing what <laughs> to do. It's like the hardest thing I've ever – you know, besides Marine Corps boot camp, I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Right. Um, and it's just interesting because when you put yourself out there like that, you're only going to learn and grow. Absolutely. And you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to. And, and we'll get into that a little bit because um, I know you've got some new plans and some new things you're moving forward, and we'll talk about that. I'm getting out of your comfort zone. But right now, I want to take a break. Uh, we're going to take a, a sponsor break, and then we will be right back with Yoga Ding International Model.
Join us this week for another episode of the Albuquerque Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, he interviews leading local business leaders that inspire the vision and spirit in every entrepreneur, discussing strengths, weakness, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together to fulfill a shared vision of a new future for Albuquerque. Listen or download this Sunday afternoon at 4 from your favorite podcasting app. And we're back. We're with international model Diego Dean on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. We're going to get right back into the interview. I want to talk a little bit for our, because uh, I know you're a solopreneur and you're building your brand, and that's what we were discussing. We were getting into Instagram a little bit, right? But I want to, I want to, if we, if you don't mind, some, give me some advice if somebody out there, especially here in Albuquerque, was wanting to be a new model or they were just starting out. What would you do? I know there's a lot of people that have that desire. Right. Um, what, what what are some tips or, or, or something that, you th- that you've gone through the hard knocks that you could give to them that would help them out? Okay. So uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, if you want to be a, a working model, because there's a difference between like a working model who actually makes who gets paid. Right. And someone who calls themselves a model <laughs> who just like has it's a like friend. It's like everybody calls themselves an entrepreneur. Everybody <laughs> calls themselves a model. Yeah. Right. Like just because – your friend has, you know, is a photographer and is like, will you model for me? Right. I mean, I guess in the strictest sense of the word, that makes you a model. Or if you've walked in, in a fashion show at Dillard's right. or something, that makes you a model. But you're not a professional model. Mm, right, you right. Know? Um, just like if we go outside and play baseball right now, we would be baseball players. Right. But that's not what we are. Right, exactly. You know, we're not right, professional right, right, baseball right. players. So there's a difference. So if you really want to be a, a, a working model or a professional model um, – what you need to realize is you're not going to be able to do that in Albuquerque. Mm. Okay. There's very few paying opportunities here in this town or in the state of New Mexico for that matter. Right. Um, doesn't mean you can't, doesn't mean you have to move away necessarily. Right. I mean, that would lead to more work, but obviously I live here, right. but you're going to have to use social media and other means to get yourself out there in order to, do modeling outside of New Mexico. Right. And so you're going to have to seek representation outside of New Mexico because there really aren't any modeling agencies here. They're mainly uh, agencies that represent actors. And then they, they say acting that's slash so modeling, that we but have... there's no modeling here. Yeah, that's so crazy. We have uh, acting as profound as I know Netflix, you know, have studio here now and all right. that. And they've been so, doing so many filming here. But it, it, it's interesting to me how... Um, there's not, it doesn't seem from what you've told me, there's not a huge modeling scene here. There's not. And it, it's really unfortunate and it doesn't really make sense. Like I, I can't explain why because New Mexico in general and especially Santa Fe is like a, a, a cultural Mecca. Yes. When it exactly. comes to, to the arts. Right. And so why wouldn't it be a huge center for design and fashion? Mm. And you think it would be, and you think it right. could be, but I can't. Uh, explain why it's not or why it, it's not becoming one yeah and the state is so diverse too that's the crazy part i mean i know you just got film you were just filming at white sands i mean that's one of the places right um to to model or film or whatever so it, it's just interesting to me why um why we don't have that what do you think it is and is there something that you've seen in particular or, or you know what what's the struggle with it i can't explain it i mean i We've all tried to figure it out, and you know, some of us have participated in, in local fashion shows, right. trying to you know increase fashion awareness and, and try to get people involved. But people like I literally could hand out tickets for free, and people wouldn't go. Mm. A lot of people, right? Um, so it's just like people just aren't into fashion. I, I mean, that's the gist of it. I mean, it's unfortunate, but I don't know. I mean, I wish I knew. I mean, there's no reason why Santa Fe couldn't be like the fashion Paris of the Southwest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You would, you would think that that would, you know, translate here. So it, somebody being a new model, getting back to that, somebody being a new model, number one, um, they need to understand that they're going to have to network outside of, of New Mexico. Absolutely. So, so you need to, there's different ways to do that. Obviously social media right. is a good one. So, so to build your page or build your brand, you, you have to have quality content. So that means you're going to have to be modeling. Right. Right. And it doesn't mean that, you know, obviously you can't just sit home by the phone waiting for photographers to call you. You have to, (laughs) if you're a model, you have to model. You have to make it happen. Right. Right. You have to create your own opportunities. Right. Right. So it could be as simple as, you know, making friends with a photographer or what I did. I knew the types of photos that I wanted. 
Okay, and, I, and at first I didn't have the connections I have now. I didn't know that many photographers. So I bought my own camera. Mm. Okay, it, it was an investment. I didn't spend right. a ton of money, but I right. bought a decent enough camera. And I, I learned how to use it. And then I had an image of, of or a vision of like, I want a photograph like this, 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 and this. I can use these different uh, backdrops in my backyard mm. um, for this. Um, I, I studied, you know, when was the right time of the day when the light was, you know, in the right position, essentially, the low sun. And then I just called up a friend, a buddy of mine who's a firefighter, okay, <laughs> so he's not a photographer. And I was like, dude, I need you to take my picture. I right. want these photos. And he literally was like, I handed him the camera, and he was like, like a caveman, like, <laughs> what is this, camera? So I had to explain to him, okay, you know, this is how you focus, you right. hold the button halfway down and all that. And so I basically just guided him. And, you know, after a little bit, uh, you know, whatever, 15 minutes, he really got into it and discovered he had some some talent, which was great. Um, and we, me and this uh, firefighter have done, like, that same year, did, like, three photo shoots, like, two in my backyard, one in the foothills. Um, and some of those are some of my favorite photos. <laughs> oh, like, wow. they, they came out great. And for, for that time, that gave me some... Um, what would you call it some gosh it's escaping me um i like, mean like uh like a uh, cache of photos you right know what right like where a, you could start you could start the whole process because you're not going to post a ton of photos you know but let's say out of that photo shoot there was um you know 20 good photos mm, and right, then we right. did three photo shoots so that's 60 mm. okay um so then it started my my cache or my storage of photos right um that i had and I could start posting them. And then when I start reaching out to photographers and they'd see my page, they'd be like, oh, they could see what I really look like. Right. Yeah, be like, exactly. oh, do I want to shoot this guy or not? You know, right. that, so that really helped me. Um, then another thing is you need to, uh, if you really want to work as a model, obviously you need an agent. Right. You need to be represented by an agency. And like I said before, there aren't agencies in, in New Mexico who just do modeling. And that's what you want, one that specializes that in modeling. That specializes in modeling, and, right. And so, I mean, there's, believe it or not, there's some decent ones in Arizona. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a bigger, obviously a bigger fashion sh scene in Phoenix and in Tucson. Um, and there's some in Denver. And there's a ton in Dallas, believe it or not. There's a lot of fashion oh, in Dallas. Oh, wow. So that, all those are just little quick plane trips. Yeah. So you, you could, know. I mean, they have websites right. and stuff. And you can reach out and they have a page where you can submit. And they tell you what kind of photos they want you to submit. And mm, they're I just like basically... That, yeah. Just, just real bland photos. Like they don't want to see you with Photoshop because they want to know what you really look like. Right. And they're just called digitals or Polaroids, basically, and they're just you in front of a white background, so you can have a friend do it or whatever. And you send it to them. If you're a female, it would be you with no makeup, you know, just with a, a regular whatever white or or black shirt on. Right. They want right. To, you know tight fitting shirt because they want to see, you know, what you look like and stuff. Um, and you send it to them, and and they'll reach out to you if they like you. Um, but. From my experience, there's no substitute for going in person. So, and, and, and I'm not telling you, you need to fly to Denver, Phoenix, and Dallas right. to do this. But, you know, you can plan like a trip to Denver to visit some people. And, hey, while I'm there, I'm going to go to this agency, this agency, and this agency. Because most of them on their website, they have um, times during the day like, oh, every Monday and Wednesday from 3 to 5, we accept walk-ins. Mm. so you literally walk right. in and you're like and you can email them first and be like hey i'm coming in here are some photos or right. here's my instagram right and then you walk in and you're and they have you fill out a form and they might take some pictures of you ask you some questions and stuff like that right and, and that's how it works like before i really got good representation every big city i'd go to i would do a i would try to walk in and i did that when i was in canada um i, I was in montreal for a little while right right um just kind of on vacation and I made uh, the choice or uh, the, the decision when I was there to visit like three or four agencies. And it, it was a good experience. Like every time that you do that, you, it gets a little bit easier. You're not nervous. Right, right, you, know, right. you know how to, it's like an interview, right? You know how to talk and represent yourself and you get better at, at, at posing. Right. And, and people don't realize that, you know, they think modeling is just, you know, stand there, show your best angle pause <laughs> they'll take a picture and it's done right you know and females nowadays young females especially are really good at that because because of cell phones now they're really good at taking selfies mm, and they know right. like if you look at we've get, all done selfies you it's get horrific. four girls you go to a nightclub right? right you go downtown you have four girls and you're like hey 
I'll take your picture. Like a second before you click the button, all four of them suddenly turn to their best angle, do a pause, <laughs> and they know they know they how exactly. to be photogenic. Like right, they right. practiced a million times. Right. And here's the thing. There's a lot more to it than that. So when you get your photo taken by an agency and they do a shoot like that, they're going to do like a rapid fire shoot, essentially. And I don't mm. know what the official name is. I don't know if there is one. But, you know, they'll say, oh, I'm going to take some pictures. Just start posing. Okay. And so basically they're going to be taking photos. You're going to hear the click right. of the camera. And every time after you hear a click, you're supposed to move. You're not just going to stay there doing the <laughs> same pose. That's the worst thing you can do. So every time after you hear a click, you're going to move. Right. Okay, and show them something different, right? And and that's where learning how to model comes in handy. It's not just, you know, being attractive. I mean, a lot of girls think, oh, I'm pretty, I'm a model, I can do this. But it takes work. Right. And and that's what I learned from living with that Colombian fashion model as I watched her at photo shoots. And after every click, she moved. And it's not just, you know, moving your face, moving your eyes, moving your mouth, moving your body, moving your hands, touching your hair, touching your head. You know, taking off your glasses, if you have glasses, putting glasses on, putting your hands in your pocket, crossing your arms. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. And the worst thing a model can do is, you know, after a minute of doing that, stop and say to the photographer, I don't know what to do. <laughs> or what do, you want, what do you want me to no, do? No, no photographer should, wants. Dude, uh... What should I do now? That's the worst thing <laughs> ever, ever. Right. And here's the thing. If the photographer keeps going, in your mind you're like, I've pretty much gone through all my poses. Right, I've done right. all my moves, but that's a good thing. I mean, it's good that if the photographer's still going, that means he's liking what he's getting, mm, right? Because if right. you're not giving him what he wants, he, he or she, he's going to say something. Right, he's going right. to say, let's try this or let's right. try that. And that's fine, okay? But if they're still going, that means it's working. So right. even though it may seem like forever, just keep going. Just be creative. You know, and that's and practicing how, that. I mean, I would imagine you would have to have. I mean, if you think about how quick they're taking pictures, and then you're moving, you've got to have a rhythm with that, and know exactly like click, 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 click. Yep. I mean, so you, like you said, having one one go to <laughs> look, one go to selfie look, um, and then you're gonna stand there, and you've probably seen it with new models. They're like, I don't know what to do next. You know, and that's what you're saying. Oh, you know? I've seen it, I, and unfortunately, I've worked with multiple a couple models here in albuquerque <laughs> like female models like it's obviously you know a male female shoot kind of thing right and after like 30 seconds they're like uh what should i do and it's like <laughs> okay then i'm coaching them and if right. the male model's coaching the female that's not good right 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 dude. i mean she should have it down but a lot of local models are like i'm a model i don't need to work at this and you could be the most gorgeous female on the face of the earth and, and very photogenic, but it's still something you need to work on. And you can work on it in front of the mirror, and obviously you can work on it by shooting often with friends. Right. You know, right. that's the time to try out new poses. Right. Like for me, for example, I, I'm very, I have a resting bitch face, <laughs> whatever the male equivalent is. I don't right, know. Right. Um, I don't know if they have a title for that. We should look that up. I don't know. Am I allowed to cuss on this show? <laughs> no, no, we're on the radio. Okay. But I think oh, we could say okay. that because uh, I wouldn't, you, I you know what I mean. We could say that one because that's like a. Uh, we we'll have to ask Byron on that. Well, but I, it's resting like a, bitch face works. Yeah, like but a, I was kind of come up with a male equivalent that's a little more harsh. <laughs> but I think people get the gist of it. So, so for <laughs> we'll me, we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in quotes, um, in parentheses. So for me, when I'm just kind of being normal, it, it's kind of a heavy look. It's kind of an intense look. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I've got that look down because that's just me doing nothing, essentially. But I've been trying to work on being a little bit lighter, right? right. So I can, you know, appeal to more people and, and represent different lines of clothing and stuff like that. So I was working on like a, you know, a little half smile. Okay. So even though sometimes I think before I perfected that look, at times I thought I'm doing the half smile right now. And then right. I'd like take a selfie or, or look at myself in the mirror and it, didn't look good at all. I'm like, I felt like I was doing this look, but when I look at it in the camera, it's a totally different look. So it's a process of practicing your look, taking photos with it, and seeing if it really is what you think you're doing, right. if it works. So now I've got that look down a little bit, you know, right. a little softer look, kind of a half smile. And, and so in Mexico City, I would throw that in there as, as one of my looks, you know, during rapid fire shooting right. and stuff. And some of those photos I'm very proud of because it's, it shows a different side to me. 
Mm. You know, it's not it's something just, that you worked on extensively. And, and that's, yeah, because right. a lot of pride, you know, and, and it's not and just, no one may not know that just looking at the photo, but you look at it personally. It, it's satisfying. It's right. Very satisfying. Exactly. And it's not just me being, you know, mean looking Viking guy. Right. You know, it's now it's like, oh, maybe females are looking at it and they're like, oh, this is the, the nice husband type. Or right. this is a guy who cooks for his wife. Or whatever. I mean, they may see things or different layers different to layers, me that, right, that right. wasn't there before. Right. And so it, it makes me, it improves my brand. Let me just well, put it well, that and, way. and not only that, you have another, there's another avenue there. And I think any model that's struggling right now, um, you know, I think these tips right there would help them tremendously to work on your craft a little bit more. Um, get, you're going to have to learn sales. You're going to have to learn how to hustle. And you're going to have to build your brand. I mean, right. just, like you said, just being attractive is not enough it's very extremely rare probably that somebody just gets picked up just because they're attractive and next thing you know they're on you know sports illustrated or vogue or whatever you know right yeah modeling i mean people don't realize it but i mean learning how to pose is is not easy mm -mm. and then you have the fashion side of it fashion shows where learning how to walk appropriately when everyone's watching you it's not just go walk to the end and pose and come right back. i mean for females especially there's a certain way they're supposed to walk a certain way. They're supposed to look a certain thing. They're supposed to do with their eyes. And the designer wants them, I would imagine, wants them to look a certain way with that piece of clothing on. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it depends on the line of clothing of the designer. He may say, I want you to be more intense. Mm. I want you to be a little lighter. I want right. you to walk a little faster or be light on your feet or whatever. And you have to be able to do that. Right, right. And, and, and females have to do it in heels. Mm. So, I mean, and men don't. Fortunately, you know, right, right. we just have, have to, do to have it. amazing abs. And, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I, I seem to pose a lot with my shirt off. But but that's what girls in Albuquerque don't really understand. They're like, oh, I've, I've walked in five fashion shows. So that means I walk really good and I don't need to work on it. And then you watch them walk in a fashion show and they have heels on and literally they look like Godzilla destroying Tokyo. <laughs> like, you know, oh, just right. oh, hands out like Frankenstein right. coming after you. And, and, and it's embarrassing. And I, I'm not trying to be negative here, but if you go to a lot of the fashion shows right. here in Albuquerque, a large portion of the of models, male and female, but especially female because there's more female models in every show, um, you'll see that. You're like, oh. And you're, it, sometimes I've been at some shows in the audience watching, and I was uncomfortable because I thought the girl might fall down. Mm. Because she was so uncomfortable. Yeah, you don't want to be. You heels. don't want to be one of those girls where you got a YouTube video. <laughs> uh, and and luckily most of them don't fall. Right. But it's still. Here's the thing, to me that's disrespectful to the designer mm. because right. when this girl is almost falling over all the time, the last thing I'm noticing is the clothes she's wearing. Yeah. Oh, that's you good. You know, yeah. I'm just looking at her, kind of like wanting to run up there and maybe spot her and catch her if she right. falls, so she doesn't fall she's off. She's made the, the attention catwalk. about herself. And not, yep. and I mean, that's awesome because like an entrepreneur, that's something too. When you're dealing with clients, whatever it may be, always making sure you put the attention on the other person and not be, th that's a problem I think we have is we are so extremely selfish in our culture. Right. And instead of being selfless and giving and then allowing that to transfer over to that other person, that's what they want. You know, right. I mean, whatever business you're in, whether it's modeling or whatever it may be, if you will practice being giving and selfless, I guarantee you, you'll be successful. Right. It's just part of it. But when you do something like that where you're not trained and you haven't been doing the training, I mean, it takes 10,000 hours, they say, to be an expert at something. So how quickly can I get those 10,000 hours across? Right. You know, so if it takes me 10,000 hours of walking to become an expert walking, then that's what you do. You know, posing, whatever it may be, it's grinding it out. And, and here's the thing. And, and People laugh at me for this, but if you were to come into my house, I have, you know, when you come in through the front door, I have my living room, which is the, the biggest room in the house. And I have, you know, hardwood floors, mm, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see in the middle of my awesome hardwood floors, a blue, a straight blue <laughs> line of tape going all the way from one end to the other. And most right. people walk, who don't know me come into my house and they're like, oh, did you just put these floors down? Is that why there's tape, you know, blue tape right, on there? Right, right. And, and. The reality is the blue tape is there because I practice my walk. Mm, okay. Good, yeah. And so, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be looking down, but since it's blue, it stands out. So when I'm walking straight ahead and I, and I, my eyes are, are up, right. Cause I right. have good posture. I can still in my peripheral vision, see that blue line. Right. So it's good practice for me to, to walk in an exact straight line. 
Right. And so, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm, I like to think I have a decent walk and I'm good at what I do, but that line is still there. Mm. It's not like I know how to walk. I'm taking, pulling up this blue line. No, I still have that tape on my floor. Right. And so I still, it reminds me like, okay, I'm nothing to do. I have music playing. I'm going to walk to the beat and go up, do my pose, turn around, practice turning, which right. isn't as easy as it sounds. Um, and, and I do it on a regular basis. Because because I'm a model and it's my craft and but I need to stay I sharp. Think, I would think muscle memory would take place too. So like when you actually do it for real, you've done it so many times. And that's the key because doing it in your living room is easy, right? right. <laughs> so I mean, I could it would be easy for me to say, oh, let me do this once. Oh, okay, it's still there. I still have it. Right. I don't need. I didn't. I don't need to practice anymore. Right. Right. But when you're in a fashion show, even if it's a small crowd, you're on usually a raised up stage. Right? right, so you're right, kind of right, right. in the spotlight. Usually, you're on stage by yourself, mm. right? Or you're walking out while someone is is walking past you and leaving, and it's a weird sensation when you know all eyes are on you. Yeah, and right. then you feel weird. It's just like if anyone's been an extra in a movie and they're telling you, you know, just walk back and forth in the background. And if you look at movies and you're looking at the people in the background walking. It's the most unnatural walk you've ever seen. Like, they don't know what to do with their arms. Their arms are stiff. And you're like, oh, my gosh. You right, know? right, like, yeah. In, and I'm sure that those people, they told them, just walk naturally. And, of yeah, course, when the, you know yeah. the camera's rolling, you're like, what is natural? This doesn't, right. I don't know what you to do. You don't know, right. Yeah, exactly. And so that's the thing. You need to get to that point where it literally is second nature and you're on autopilot so that w there are no nerves. Even if you have nerves. In your nervous, you're not thinking about it. Right, you're just exactly. doing what you've trained your body to do. I think it's everything. Uh, I was in the Marine Corps, obviously, you know, before we go out into combat. It's training, 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 and that's, you know, a harsh environment. Right. Um, I think with jiu-jitsu, train, train, train. I know you did a lot of competitions right. um, in jiu-jitsu. That's the same thing. You, I mean, how many hours did you train before you actually felt where you were comfortable going against a competitor? And, and that's the thing. You, you can do... You can be great at the gym, right? right? You can be the, tapping everyone who's at your belt level and stuff. Then you're like, I'm ready. And you go <laughs> do a competition. And then it's weird because it, it, there's not a huge crowd necessarily at jiu-jitsu tournaments. But still, you know, you're going against someone you don't know. Right. And it's an official thing where there are coaches yelling at you. There's a little, maybe your teammates are yelling encouragement and stuff like that. And it's a whole different game, mm, right, right? You know, right. And, it, and it's like, oh, I usually would be able to tap this dude, but now I'm getting my butt kicked and I'm forgetting how to breathe and I'm all out of breath and I'm right. exhausted. Yet in practice, I can go forever, right? You know, so it's it's you need to get that real experience of actually doing it too. And I and I think you know with entrepreneurs um, and also business owners, you have to practice your pitch. You need to practice um, what you're going to be speaking, going through your PowerPoint, whatever it may be getting it down, going over and over and over and over again so that you're not ad-libbing whenever you go in front of a client. Right, and, and that's the thing. Like you mentioned, practicing your pitch. Practicing your pitch doesn't necessarily mean practicing it by yourself. Mm, you know, yeah, I mean, right. and I learned that when I used to do acting, and I'd have an audition. I would memorize my lines and, you know, obviously rehearse it by myself a ton. Right. And then I'd make sure to rehearse it with someone else. Like, give them the lines, and I'd right, do it I in that, front of right. them. And the more people I could do it in front of, the better the audition would go. And then the few times where I'd get lazy, and I'd be like, I'm good. I don't need to do it in front of someone. And maybe I was busy and had other stuff to do. Those auditions were like epic fails. <laughs> like, I would go and do my thing and forget my lines, or it just felt weird and didn't right, come out right, natural. Right. Because it was the first time I was doing it in front of anyone. So, you know, when you're practicing your pitch, do it in front of other people. Don't just practice practice it by yourself in the comfort of your own home because then the first time you're pitching it to someone else is going to be the real thing. The and real that's thing, not right. what you want. Right, exactly. Um, I kind of want to get into it, if you don't mind. I know I, know, I think we've printed a ton of value uh, for those that are out there that are looking at modeling or are looking at building their brand. I kind of want a little bit about um, you and, and what, what do you have going on right now? What do you've got going on for the future, Diego? So basically, as I mentioned before, I was married to uh, that Brazilian girl um, who still lives in Albuquerque, who is still my friend, by the way, just in case she <laughs> listens to this. <laughs> we still talk sometimes. Um, anyway, got divorced. Uh, when I got divorced, I was maybe 41 years old. Mm. And when I got married, I was like 29. Right. Okay. So basically, I found myself in a weird situation because 
the last time I was a, a single man, I was in my 20s. Mm, right. And now suddenly I'm single and I'm in my 40s. Don't really know what to do. The world has changed. Don't really know who I am. Right. Where to go. I was just kind of a, I don't know, an Armani plastic bag blowing in the wind. <laughs> so so right. to speak, to be completely humble. Um, so I, it was a tough position. You right, know, and I know right. a lot of men find themselves, a lot of people, not just men, but a lot of people find themselves in that position, you know, like either recently divorced or just, you know, in their 40s and, and wondering, like, what's happened with my life, you know, mm -hmm. my health, you know, I have no hobbies, you know, I'm, I'm not happy, I'm right. not fulfilled, I'm just spending all my time by myself and it's, and it's getting worse, mm -hmm. you know, the spiral is starting, you know, right. and you're going down. The comfort zones. It, Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so I, I found myself in that in that position. And so, you know, luckily, I think it was the travel and, and modeling that kind of pulled me out of it. But right. fortunately, you know, I've always had a, a somewhat healthy lifestyle. And I think since I've been divorced and don't have to dedicate all my time to that, I've been able to spend more time on me, which is, you know, health and fitness. So I've really got into dieting. Mm. Um, and modeling is a big part of it, but just eating healthy, right? Um, being active, um, being more social, right? Uh, because it's easy when you do a lot of work from home, just to not put on pants, stay <laughs> home, right? And just be like, it's okay, I'm working from home. And then before you know it, you know you haven't left the house besides going to Walmart to go grocery shopping for two weeks, right? And once you kind of get in that that route or that rut, so to speak, right? Then that becomes your normal and you don't it's hard to pull yourself out of it like other people would invite me to be like hey let's go to meet up at the bar and have a beer right and i would get like offended like i would get mad i'm like, like why dare, are you bugging me dare yeah, yeah. this guy like <laughs> want me to go meet with him i'm like doesn't he know like i'm in my underwear and so and it's weird that 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 was my attitude at the time so you know it, it's not easy but you know i created a healthy lifestyle right you know a healthy routine of like going to the gym every morning cooking my own meals whenever I can, or if I'm busy teaching classes, planning for that, like right. meal prepping or, or buying some nutritious bars or, or, or snacks that I can take with me to school uh, to eat in between classes and stuff. Um, getting out of the house and, and being social and stuff and, and, and doing outdoor activities. Right, right. Um, you know, all that stuff, traveling, setting travel goals, um, all that stuff is getting me out of my comfort zone. Right. right. So now I'm used to like, or I enjoy being out and interacting with people. And when, and I'm texting people, Hey, let's meet up here. Let's go do this. Right. Right. You right. know, and, and, and I need to hold myself accountable and keep doing that because it's so easy to stop that and fall back into that, mm, that rut yeah. again of just being a, a hermit sitting in his underwear. <laughs> yeah. Especially. And I, I think this is important with entrepreneurs because a lot of them work from home. Maybe they're just starting out. Um, and so let's give some advice if you don't mind, let's let's go in that arena because uh, I know there there's some future projects that you're working on, and we'll get into that. Um, but I, I and maybe that'll it'll just naturally lead into it. But um, what advice would you say? Let's let's say somebody just um, quit their day job per se, and now they're at home. Maybe they've gone through a relationship change. You know, they're they're starting something new. They kind of don't. And, and you know, a lot of times, like you said, we can feel like we're frozen or we're in a rut. Right. So what, what are some of the things that, that you would encourage them? And I know with, I know you, um, you know, you're in your forties. So I know, you know, being extremely fit and being a 40 year old, especially a male 40 year old virgin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But being a, <laughs> yes. a, a, a 40, uh, being a 40 year old, um, that's something that is kind of rare nowadays. It almost seems like, you know, obesity is on the rise in the United States. Right. So can you share, can you talk a little bit about that? If somebody's feeling that or if they are in that rut? Here's the thing. And, and you have to keep it simple because it has to be whatever changes you make has to be sustainable. Mm. You know, because mm -hmm. you could easily be like, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to do that and have this big list. And right. then you're all gung ho about it and excited. And you do it for like three days. And then <laughs> you, you're like the next day, do half of it. And then you're right back in your rut. And you're like, right, right. that was too much. That yeah. Is your stressful. gym kind of starting to die you down know? now from January the 1st? <laughs> right. <laughs> So, I mean, I would say baby steps, you know, make significant changes, but, but be deliberate about it and, and make them, you know, steps that are sustainable. Right, so, right. So, here's the thing. If you're working from home, like a lot of business people are, you know, 
even if you're, you plan to work from home for most of the day, here's the thing. Once you wake up, get dressed. Mm, and that's right, a simple right. thing. And we've heard that before. But And people are like, well, that's why I like working from home because I can stay in my pajamas. But most of us aren't very effective in our pajamas. Right, right. We just don't get a lot done because our pajamas are for sleeping. Right, right? exactly. And our brain knows that. Right. right. So it makes us not very motivated, not get a lot done. Right. And so first thing in the morning after you get up and, you know, drink a big glass of water, change your clothes, mm. you know. Right. And for me, I try to go, if I can, go to the gym first thing in the morning mm. because I've right. noticed uh, if I do that, the rest of my day is great. You know, even if it's a bad day, I still feel good because I'm like, well, at least I went to the gym. You know, right. I feel good about myself. Well, I mean, like I'm thinking about it right now. It gets you moving and active and going and gets everything fired up, ready for the day. Right. You know what I mean? So it's not something where you're stagnant and you've just had a monster or a coffee and now you're, you know, you just barely staggered out of bed and now you're mm-hmm. in your car and you're driving and then you got to show up for that meeting. Right. You know, what uh, now, as far as that goes, let's get into a little bit of, um, if you don't mind, let's get into a little bit of, of, what they can do, like if there's an entrepreneur out there and they're busy, they're, you know, they're on the go all day long. What are some of the things they can do fitness wise um, in that arena to make sure that they, you know, stay active? Well, well here's the thing. Once again, the, the key is sustainability. So, I mean, right. if, if you work like a nine to five, right, obviously, and you have a, like a commute, for example, it's not realistic for you to get up before work and go to the gym. Mm. I mean, that's not really, I mean, some people, if you're, if you're like a morning person right. and that works for you, right. okay, if you r- naturally rise at 5 a.m. and you don't have to be worked till nine, yes, by all means, go to the gym first. Right. Okay. But for me, for example, I'm not naturally a, a, a super early morning person. Like, right. like I like to get eight hours sleep. Right. So usually if I don't have to be anywhere, I'll wake up at seven ish, mm, right. you know, maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later. Right. You know, but obviously if I have to to teach a class at 8 30 i'm probably not going to hit the gym before that i'm not going to have time right okay exactly. unless i have a deadline like a fitness show right. <laughs> yeah, then i'll go do early morning cardio but that's right. different okay so choose something uh, some type of physical activity that's sustainable that can fit into your schedule hmm. okay and it can be as simple as walking hmm. right okay like if you have a dog okay get outside and be like okay i work from nine to five okay so i'm going to come home every day at, at whatever 5 30 I'm going to drink, you know, if I'm hungry, have something low calories just to hold me over, a little right, snack, right, right, right. something healthy, some some trail mix or whatever. And then I'm going to take my dog for a walk and I'm going to, you know, map it out on my phone so it's a mile. Right. Miles really not that far walking. You know, it takes roughly, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. Right. So there, you know, your dog is getting out. It's something you have to do anyway. Right. right? Your dog exactly. has to go for a walk. Um, you're outside and you're creating healthy lifestyle habits right you know exactly. so then you know every day hey every day at 5 30 i walk my dog you know and then maybe as 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 time goes maybe you make it a mile and a half right you make it two miles right that kind of thing and that's sustainable okay mm-hmm. you can do that obviously forever as long as you're having the same schedule right and over time that's how you you know, create a lifestyle and how you burn calories. I mean, obviously you're going to be burning more calories consistently than if right, you didn't right. do that. And that's essentially how you burn fat is by creating a deficit. a calorie. Yeah, deficit. exactly. Yep. So l- let me ask you this. So as far as, um, cause I know you have to stay, you know, in, in amazing shape and then also you have to eat a certain way. And I know entrepreneurs, a lot of times we can get in such a rut where we're, you know, we're in busy in between meetings. We swing through McDonald's. We, you know, run into Chipotle, whatever it may be, um, you know, and uh, food can kind of become this necessary evil. Like, okay, yeah, I need to eat. I'm starving. Let me go eat. You know, my blood sugar is low, whatever. Um, what are some tips that you could give, um, you know, these entrepreneurs that are out there and especially like men over 40 um, to make sure, I mean, because like I said before, being a man and having abs over 40 Extremely rare. Not easy. <laughs> Not easy. Well, first of all, people need to realize that any restaurant that has a drive through is not healthy food. People are like, oh, it's Panera Bread. It's Chipotle. If it has a drive through right, right. it is fast food. Right. It is not healthy. People need to, to understand that. So there's different things you can do. Most of most you can't of it eat clean in a drive thru. You, you can it's impossible. <laughs> there there is no Whole Foods drive thru. <laughs> right, exactly. At least not in New Mexico. Maybe somewhere. But probably in LA. <laughs> but anyway, um you need to plan ahead. 
I mean, that's all it is. Right. It's just planning ahead. So you, most of us know our schedules in advance, right? So for me, for example, if I have, you know, days where I'm teaching two classes that day, right? I'm like, oh, dude, that's like the bulk of my day. You know, I like to cook, so I'll meal prep. Now, not everyone is cut out for that. Not everyone likes to cook and meal prep and put it in Tupperware and all that stuff. Right, right, so right. So you have different options. Okay, you can buy stuff that basically comprises a meal. Okay, so for example, I'll put some whey protein um, to the side and have like a, a protein shake, shaker thing, right. half full of egg whites, which you can get at Walmart. It's just a carton of egg whites. Right. And you can drink it straight if you wanted to. It has no flavor. It's homogenized. It's safe. You know, egg whites is pure protein. No carbs, no fat. So you can put that in there. Um, you can get some like Greek yogurt, you know, low fat Greek yogurt. Right, and, right. And, and I don't want to say that you need to avoid fats because fats are essential. Okay, so don't cut out all fats, but just right. realize that fats yield a lot more calories than carbohydrates and protein. So, so if you do kind of have a, a fat-heavy diet, you may end up having more calories than you think you're taking in. That's, that's the thing about fats is just right. beware. Um, so you can get some low-fat Greek yogurt, which is high in protein also. Um, you can pack some almonds. So, you know, a good meal is just throw the almonds in the Greek yogurt and it's a single serving Greek yogurt. Right, right. Eat that and then have the protein shake on the side. Right there. That's, that's essentially a right, right, essentially right. a meal. Right. Um, so that's something you can do if you don't like meal prepping. And here in Albuquerque, at least, there are multiple meal prepping companies mm. that you yeah, can I, buy. I was talking to somebody on that. You can yeah. buy, you know, pre-made meals. And dude, these meals are amazing. Mm. Like I've never bought them myself because i cook obviously right right but guys from my gym do it and they bring it in some of the trainers you know they're always on the go going from right, gym to right, gym right. and stuff with different clients so they'll come in with this and they'll microwave it you know in the microwave and dude there's there's like amazing blueberry pancake mm. uh with um sugar-free amazing organic syrup <laughs> and it just you it, have to post this on your story if you hear should, if somebody tells you or something I should, what I mean, good they, companies are i'll that take would be something for no, us that's a, so. that's a good idea i can when i'm at the gym next time it's almost every day that there someone is eating one of those right um you know i can take a picture of it and you know put the instagram account on there and stuff. yeah tag them yeah yeah because mm -hmm, I, I know a lot of people do that especially people right. who like for example who are in the healthcare industry right and they work 12 hour shifts like mm, at, at right. unmh or presbyterian or wherever and they only get like a little break, you know, for, for lunch here or there. And, you know, cafeteria food is at your desk on the go. It's yeah. not the most, you know, no. healthy stuff. So if you have these pre, pre-made meals, you just keep them in the fridge, nuke them in the microwave. Right. Super nutritious. And if you want to go low carb, they have, you know, lower carb options. Higher right. Carb. Exactly. I mean, depending on what you're looking for, they have. And I don't know the, the price range, but the types of people who are using them aren't rich people, you know. So I assume they're affordable. I think one thing that you told me um, that I that I have changed my lifestyle since I talked to you is like it's true. Eighty percent is diet, twenty percent is working out. So no matter how much jujitsu do I do, no matter how much if mm -hmm. I'm at if I'm you know knocking back a loaf of bread <laughs> and drinking those IPAs, it's mm -hmm. not and having consuming all that sugar, it's not going to help. And that's the thing, people who are like really young, you know, teenagers and people in their twenties, you know, obviously they'll say otherwise you know they'll be like oh it's all i work out a lot and i eat junk food look at me right. and here's the thing you're 20 years old <laughs> you know like really it doesn't matter what it's, you do it, yeah exactly you know like you look great either way you know and and i think the the proof of this is you know people who are over 40 right you know what works for them mm, because right. obviously then you don't necessarily have genetics on your side right anymore, exactly you know so you really have to pay attention to it and 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 for me, you know, I travel a lot. I have a really strict diet. And as long as when I'm traveling, I somewhat maintain that diet as best I can. Right. I'll come back after being gone for three weeks or a month. And there's really not much difference. Right. You know, and I'm maybe working out here or there when I can, if there's a gym available, doing some cardio, or some weights and stuff. But right, it's right. not like when I'm in Albuquerque. It's not an everyday thing. So, you know, without a doubt, you know, diet is way more important than training. Right, I mean, like obviously well, both are good. But. Well, I mean, even now you you had me taste your coffee there. Um, you know, everybody takes those super sugary creamers, right, and dump it in there. And there's I don't know how many grams of sugars in that. I mean, that just spikes you. Ugh. I would imagine. And even the artificial but, sweeteners aren't healthy. No, either. yeah, they're not. And that tastes amazing. And what did you have in that one? You made so that basically. Or? Here's the thing, I I don't really drink milk unless I'm in Latin America because they don't have other options. Okay, right. and the milk in Latin America and in Canada seems to be really good. 
<laughs> it doesn't upset <laughs> my stomach. American right. milk, something about it, the, the processing or whatever, homogenization process messes me up. So I don't do milk. Um, and milk has sugar in it. It has right. lactase, which is a type of sugar. So what, and I don't do any sweeteners. So in my coffee, what I've learned to do is use heavy cream. Have a, you have a really good coffee. I mean, you're kind it's, of the dude. Coffee I'm a coffee connoisseur. Kind of yeah, <laughs> fixing now. You, you'll but, notice that once you start following them on. Uh, I love what is coffee. it? Diego Dean seventy four. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and here's the thing. I put heavy cream in my coffee, and all that is is literally like a hundred percent cream. So if you think of what half and half is, right? Half and half is half milk, half heavy cream. Right. Okay. And so heavy cream is just obviously 100% mm. heavy cream. And you can buy it anywhere. You can get it at Walmart, and sometimes it's called heavy whipping cream. Right. And don't confuse that with whipped cream, <laughs> which is full of sugar. Right. Okay? But here's the thing. If you go to a coffee shop, 90% of them, or at least the good ones, including Starbucks, they all have heavy cream, but they keep it behind the counter. Oh, so you okay. have to ask for it. And usually at most places, especially Starbucks, there's right. no upcharge. Okay? Other, some places are like, oh, we're going to charge you 50 cents or whatever. Right, right. Some places, some designer places. But... But Starbucks and satellites, this is for one example, thing you can change like right now. Dude, and here's simple. the thing: what heavy cream is? It's pure fat, okay? And it's not a ton of fat unless you like filled the glass half full of heavy cream. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're just putting a splash of it in there, okay, as your creamer essentially. So basically, that would be maybe what a teaspoon right. of it, and a teaspoon yields like three grams of fat. So that's not a lot of three right, grams of fat right, is not right. a lot, okay? Right. And here's the thing. Heavy cream is naturally sweet, but it has no sugar. It has no protein, no sugar. It's just good fat. Mm. So put that in your coffee. You're getting a little bit of fat, which two or three grams, that's fine. Right, okay? exactly. That's not a big deal. And you can even have them make lattes out of it. And obviously lattes, that's a lot more cream. Okay, right, so a lot right, more right. fat. But still, no sugar. Okay, yeah. so what I did is right now I, I'm making different coffee all the time. But today I'm, I'm experimenting with pecan-flavored coffee. Mm. Um, cause I'm into nut flavors lately. Right, right, right. That sounded really weird, but um, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> right, exactly. I'm a fan of pecans. Let's just say right. That. And so basically, I have a little espresso maker that you put on the stovetop. Right. Okay, and I put uh, the pecan coffee in there, made a little uh, espresso, so to speak, put it over ice, and then with a little bit of heavy cream, and that's it. And because of the heavy cream, there's no need to add sugar or artificial, fake, unhealthy sweeteners or anything, and it's great. And so I use heavy cream in, in all of my coffee all the time, whether it's a, you know, a latte or whatever. Even a, an Americano, I'll be like, hey, can you steam a little bit of heavy cream, put it on there, or just regular house coffee. Right. I'll say, hey, can you just pour a little bit of heavy cream in there? And they do, and it makes it, you know, it, it, it also controls my hunger a little bit because it's got some fats in there. Right, right. Which kind of helps, uh, especially when I'm on the road. When right. I'm in Latin America, I'm drinking lattes all the time. Right, And right. so I've got, that keeps me from like binging on pastries and tacos if I'm in Mexico. <laughs> like that. So yeah. I love my coffee. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, let's, uh, uh, we've gone an hour and 15 minutes. Oh. So yeah, we're it's going to. Flowed so naturally. <laughs> I know it did. It was awesome having you here. I want to thank you, Diego, for coming and bringing so much uh, energy to the show. Um, I know we're going to get a lot out of it. Whether you're, you know, and and I want to, we'll have to bring you back, maybe bring some guests on with you. Maybe we can get into this because I feel it's a huge part of an entrepreneur, a business owner to make sure first that they're taking care of themselves and their body. No, I'm glad you mentioned that because if you're not in the right place physically and mentally, you cannot help anyone else. Right. I mean, we've all heard that before, but it, it really is that simple. Like if your life is out of control, if your head's not in the right place, if you don't feel good about yourself, if your health isn't good. You, you really cannot be a very effective human being. Right, exactly. And, and I know you're just going to um, – I know uh, just real quickly, you're looking at doing something like this in the future with, with fitness, with coaching, with lifestyle. Do you have something? Exactly. I'm glad you brought that up because what I'm discovering is, you know, I've been through a lot with my divorce. Right. Um, and, and changing my life and being more healthy and, and reinventing myself essentially. And, and I realize there's a lot of people – especially men over 40 who are in a similar situation. And, and I realize I'm in a position to really help them, to right. give them advice. And it's already happening. I mean, people are reaching out to me through my modeling page mm. from all over the world right. and saying, you know, I'll post a, a photo of my award-winning paleo pancakes that I invented <laughs> mm. that are yeah, yeah. so good. And I'll post a picture of them and people reach out. What are those? Oh, paleo. What's the recipe? I'm, I'm trying to lose weight. Can you help me? Right, right. And, uh, you know, or I'm posting a photo of me at the gym or a, selfie or whatever and they're like oh you inspire me you're at the gym so much and all this so people are already reaching out and asking for advice or, or asking for a little bit of help so uh, what i'm starting to do um is i've already created a, a, a 
an additional Instagram page, which is more geared towards just lifestyle in general, health and fitness. So it's not modeling. It's just, you know, people who want to live a cleaner, healthier, or more fun lifestyle. Right. And that's Diego Dean's lifestyle. So, so it's, it's Diego and then D-E-A and E and it has an S on the end because it's supposed to be, you know, plural. Um, or not plural, possessive. So it's Diego Dean's lifestyle. So Diego Dean's lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And that's your new Instagram? Yep. I have 25 followers. I you know you're thinking, I was going to say 25,000. I, I just launched just it. started it. I launched yeah, it yeah. two days ago. It has three photos. Yeah, so it's a brand new like, page. Really been doing any branding with I haven't. Anything. I'm just beginning, and I'm excited because of all the information um, and experience I've gained from my other my modeling page. Right. Um, and obviously talking with you and doing podcasts like this and listening to other podcasts. I'm excited to launch this page and put all these new practices. Oh, I think it'll, you be, know. it'll be awesome. Yep. Well, cool. Well, thanks, Diego, for coming on Albuquerque Business Podcast. And make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes so you never miss an episode. And you can stop by our website at abqpodcast.com. That's abqpodcast.com. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thank you to our sponsor, DukeCityMarketing.com. Please go to abqpodcast.com where you can get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner in Albuquerque.